going for bigger clients demands a bit more from you than just winging it, doesn't it? It definitely does. I think it's a really good topic because any entrepreneur starting out, you know, when we started the company, which was about 17 years ago, so it's been a while, um, we really wanted to go for big brands. And when you're a new agency or company or whatever your whatever services you're selling, um, it, it no one cares about another ad agency or another services company. There's there's enough of them out there. But we really wanted to get well-known brands on the roster. And it took uh, many years, you know, probably like three or four years to do that. But what I would do is, you know, get less uh, lesser known brands that paid a little bit of money, just to kind of keep the lights on. And then I would pitch big brands. And we had a really big breakout campaign with Microsoft that you had referenced with Dimitri Martin, and it's in the book. And when we had that campaign, it was, we kind of did it at cost and we didn't do it to make any money, even though it was with a, a very successful, well-known brand that has billions of dollars. And so what I always tried to strive for and believed in is, you know, do the less, less known brands that don't have a lot of money. Um, and my philosophy was we're going to do the big famous brands when we're starting at cost, or sometimes even we, we pitch free ideas and we'd say, look, we'll, we'll cover production. And if you like it, you can run it and pay us back for production. And it was an investment and it, it, you know, it's easy on the other side of it for me to say, yeah, everyone should do that. It's really hard when you're, when you don't have the funds, but for me getting on our website and in our creds deck, you know, famous brands like, you know, Nintendo, Microsoft, uh, you know, uh, Adidas, for me, that was worth going after and doing uh, free work just to get those big brands because big brands beget bigger brands. And so when you can, if they're like, well, Microsoft and Adidas trust this company, then we can trust them too. And then you can start charging the right fees for your work, but you've got those case studies to prove it because no one cares about the window washing company or the dry cleaning company that you did, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. that's one thing th that I really believe in is, is you know, do the work to keep the lights on, do the local stuff, but then swing for the fences, proactively pitch ideas, cold call, get get someone to connect you to someone and say, hey, I have an idea for you. I know you're coming out with something new. I just want to, you know, pitch this idea. And you might pitch 10 and you might get two or one, but, you know, after a couple of years, you've got really famous brands on your roster and then you can kind of take it to the next level. So that was one philosophy I always believe in is, is do free work and the money will come later, you know? Well, Jay, I want to unpack that a bit for you because, you know, somebody might be listening to this and saying like, wow, okay, you got Microsoft. Like, what is the things that we need to have in place before you even go and pitch someone like a big account like Microsoft? Like, you would have had experience under your belt. You would have had some confidence in your idea. A lot of times when you get started, like, you might not even have the the skills refinement to confidently go pitch a big brand. So I want to take you back to the beginning at your beginner's mindset. What was it that made you go to a point where you said, you know what, we could pitch Microsoft and we'd be awesome at it? Well, I think we we always believed in our creativity, even if we weren't a well-known brand at the time, real, a well-known company. And we did a lot of strategic homework. So if we're pitching a well-known client, we would read the annual report. You know, we would listen to the quarterly stockholders meeting. We would study the person that we're pitching and what their position is, maybe something that they said in the press about what they need to accomplish. So we would really go in, confidence came from being prepared. And we would really go mm. in understanding what they needed to crack. And then we would have three ideas that we think could solve what they needed to crack. And so it wasn't about us or our brand, it was about the ideas. The ideas kind of stood on their own. And then it was about, while well, you know a lot about our business, you definitely have done your homework. And those two things gave us credibility, even if our name and our client roster didn't. And so, mm -hmm. and of course, like, hey, anyone, you know, if anyone's going to come and say, hey, give me 45 minutes, I've got some free ideas to help you solve this X problem. You have a new product launching. They're not going to say no, you know, especially now. And and when we were doing it, we were flying all over the place. You know, now you can just do it over Zoom 
and mm. it costs costs nothing except the manpower that you put into it. And so, you know, doing your homework, really knowing the person you're pitching, um, what what triggers them, and then that give, that'll make you confident to be able to sell.